it's gonna feel like we skipped like a week in time guys and that is because remember when I was sick well I just got to start feeling better when we went and did the cave with all the cave art and then Kurt has crashed and burned with the flu so we have been in the rain since we landed in France several weeks ago and Kurt just said I don't feel like this rain and this cold anymore so I told him we'd get in the van I would find us a campsite and we would drive south and we would get out of the rain I couldn't promise we'd get out of the cold but I did get him out of the rain we drove two days a little over four hours one day a little over two hours the next and we are in a tiny teeny tiny little town that apparently shuts down for <laughs> winter break but we are about a mile north of the Mediterranean Sea in the south of France at a campsite where we can settle in Kurt won't have to worry about anything with the van and he can just concentrate on getting better now I just took about a 10 minute walk to town to the pharmacy to get him some cold medicine and uh, this is a beautiful little town but it is a ghost town everything is closed up tight and when I asked the lady at the pharmacy if there was a bakery or a restaurant or a coffee shop or anything open she kind of laughed at me and she said maybe in the morning so I'm headed back to the van at least the pharmacy was open and look up guys nothing but blue skies all around so I fulfilled my promise to Kurt to get him to some sunshine where he could focus on getting better that's where we're at but I will tell you that once he gets better which if he follows my path that'll be two or three days but once he gets better we're only about 15 minutes from our next planned destination where even though everyone said we wouldn't be able to do it here in Europe we have found some birds holy cow we have made it to i believe this is the mediterranean well i think it's kind of like a wetland area that comes right off of it i, I don't think we're actually looking right out of the mediterranean yet but i bet there it is that's it <laughs> that's it right there we are at the mediterranean guys Woo! we are i guess this is considered the french riviera Woohoo! kurt's feeling a little bit better today Luckily, the medicine we got for him at the pharmacy makes him groggy, but it's helping him rest and get better. So I'm taking advantage of our downtime and getting some laundry. One big difference between so far here over in Europe compared to South America is the laundry situation. In South America, you dropped your laundry off and somebody washed it for you and you came back later and picked it up. Here, there are vending machine type places everywhere and you do your own laundry. And it costs more, <laughs> $6 a load. So two big loads, they are big machines. Two big loads to wash and dry. It's gonna cost us $18. We could have got that done for us in Latin America for eight to $10. But it's okay because we need laundry looks like g money's going out for a little walk today that's a good sign kurt's feeling a little bit better Sun, finally. yeah some sunshine we've got all of our rugs airing out the vans airing out he knows what to do when the sun's out he even hesitates. there you go buddy have a good walk i think maybe we should get vanna out see what she thinks good morning 
good news to report. He may not be 100%, but he is feeling much better after a couple of days rest there at that campground. It was the perfect spot to just shut everything down and let him rest. But we are on the road. The sunshine is out. The skies are blue. We cannot stay at that campsite any longer. We got a little bit of a drive, uh, some of it along this beautiful coast. We're kind of going along some lagoons, so we haven't got a wide open view of the Mediterranean yet. But uh, there's a little bit of a uh, bird activity starting to happen as we drive through here, and especially some pretty pink birds, which make me excited. And we hope where we're taking you today, we're gonna see a lot more of them, maybe pretty close miles, up, and uh, maybe even have to pull out the big camera. Are you excited, Kurt? Yeah, it's just great to have the sun out. <laughs> it's soothing to the soul. It is. And also to be able to get out in the nature and look at some birds through the big lens. I'm super excited, guys. This is what we love. Let's go do it. After driving through the pretty marshes, through a couple of towns and cities, passing a few of the white horses, which I need to learn more about to tell you about them. This area seems to be famous for the white horses and the black cows that have horns. We'll get the scoop. But we've got our parking spot here at this little spot within this nature reserve. Kurt's got the big camera. We're headed in. So this is a super hot spot for bird watching here in France. Unfortunately, it's a super hot spot during migratory times with most of these birds coming back and forth and stopping off here to rest as they make their journey down to Africa. Now we are not here during my migratory times, but we will see the pretty pink flamingo and any other birds we see will just be a bonus. So let's go bird watching guys. In the fall, the birds, they camouflage so well. You can see the brown leaves in there and the little tiny birds just match perfectly. But their little movement gives them away. And this one's doing a little preening and enjoying some of the rare winter sun. I'm back in my happy place. So we would call this a white stork. And on a lot of the rooftops in some of the medieval villages, they have, or like on some of the big towers, they have nests. And I believe they're for the storks. And we've seen storks in window fronts and shops. And I've kind of been curious about what kind of storks they are. And we've heard that they're not here now because they've kind of migrated but based on the signage here, it looks like at least these white storks are here in South France during the winter. But they're gorgeous birds. They're kind of tall storks with big long orange legs. They have a little black underwing to them and a bright orange beak, beak and they're bright white. And today is a cool and windy day and you can just see as their feathers kind of dry out they almost puff them out and you can just see them in the wind. They're absolutely gorgeous. Now alongside of them 
are some white ones and they are smaller. So I'm not sure the, if the ones, the bigger ones with the black wings are the male and the white ones are females or if the white ones are a completely different kind of bird. So <laughs> we've got to do a little research and figure it out. But what a stunning place. What a nice bird reserve this is that we've discovered down here in the south of France. Everyone told us we would not find birds in Europe. Well, here you go guys. Not only birds, but flamingos. Now if you see this map here, you see that flamingos are found throughout the world in different places and they're usually different kinds of flamingos. We were fortunate enough to see the Andean flamingo, the Chilean flamingo, uh, the flamingos in Mexico. When I was young, I've seen the flamingos in the Bahamas. There's even some in South Florida. I would have never guessed you would have found flamingos in France, but here they are. Now this place is full of all kinds of birds, cranes, egrets, ducks, coots, little tiny brown birds, but the star, storks, yeah storks but the star of the show at this place is for sure the pretty pink flamingo what a great place we discovered down here it's pretty cool you can see the flamingos here are sleeping and some of them are on two legs and some of them are on one leg they just kind of wrap their necks up around their bodies and tuck their beak up under their feathers. And you can see some of them have kind of like pink eyeballs and pink heads. They look kind of like albino, but they are absolutely beautiful. And we are able to get up really super close to these birds. And this is a surreal experience. Wow, they are gorgeous birds. And if you can walk through here, you see this is a marshy area with this big wispy uh, sort of grass. And these grasses give you plenty of areas to kind of take cover from the birds and also for the birds to hide from us but it gives you all sorts of little places to peek out in the marsh flats and get different angles at the birds get different angles at the sun catching all their different colors and getting them different types of feeding activities and sleeping activities so by spending a little bit of time here we're really getting to see the birds and what they do and how they behave and that's pretty amazing. Yeah. Do you have plans for 
getting close. It's time to head back to the van for a couple of reasons. One, it's gonna get dark. And two, oh, the temperature's dropping as the sun starts to go away. But I thought we were a little too early to see what this place is super famous for, besides the migration, of course. And that is the flamingos here do a mating dance. It's called the parade. And uh, as the sun's starting to go down, they're getting a lot more active. And we're seeing what looks like the beginnings of the mating dance. Now, I still think we are a little early. And we're not seeing it in, you know, it's full on parade mode. But there is definitely the larger flamingos, which I'm assuming are the males, are kind of grouping up and prancing back and forth with their heads way up in the sky. And it looks like the smaller flamingos, which to me I'm assuming are the females, are gathered around starting to watch the parade. So hopefully you pick up on a little bit of that in the video. We didn't get much of it, but pretty exciting to get even a glimpse of that. Whew. But now let's we'll start working our way back to the van. Wow, that was amazing. I caught some sunset shots and I got the flamingos and the, the storks and some herrings and it was gorgeous. What a beautiful, amazing day. It's exciting to be back in the nature. And we found birds. Exciting. Yes. I was thinking about your mom and dad. Gone. I don't see him. You can go forward slow. All right, we were driving down the road and Kurt spotted a beaver. By the time we got backed up, it looks like we've missed him. And now we know we got to keep our eyes open for beavers. One thing we've learned about G Money is he's definitely a tropical kitty. The cold weather is definitely not his thing and uh, the sun's come out and it's warmed up a little bit and he's found his element. But this right here is where we stayed last night and there's a lot of campsites. Of course, we left there late after we had a just a magical experience with the flamingos. They're so majestic and it was just so incredible. And I think Snow told you, we've had multiple encounters with flamingos throughout the Americas and each one of them been special, but we have never had such an intimate experience where we were able to get up close to them and see so many of their different behaviors. And so it was just absolutely incredible. We whipped into here last night. This is a free spot and uh, really not sure the reason why it's here, although there's a fancy restaurant and there's some farms here and there's some of those white horses i'll have to get snow to tell you the story of the horses she's researched it a little bit but i think at one time there was some wild white horses here but they too are beautiful so maybe we can get over there and get some shots of those but today we are heading out and i'll be honest with you we're not even sure where we're going to be heading along the riviera towards italy and we kind of been eyeballing some spots to be honest with you as we've researched some of these cities have a lot of warnings for break-ins and windows and things like that and at this point in our lives we really don't need any additional stress but we'll make a decision on where we want to go and what we're going to do next there's a lot of things to do so we're not worried about that it's just making a decision it is a little bit cooler today probably i don't know in the low 40s but the sun is out and that seems to be making all the difference in the world Oh, that vitamin D is a good thing. Camargue is a coastal region in southern France. It is south of the city of Arles and between the two arms of the Rhone River Delta. It is a marshy plains area that covers over 360 square miles or 930 square kilometers. It is the largest river delta in Western Europe. As we showed you yesterday, it is a very important bird area with over 400 species of birds. Its lagoons are used to make salt with huge manufacturing sites all over this area. It is notorious for ferocious mosquitoes, 
but thankfully we missed that because of the cold weather. The Camargue horse roams these marshes and has for centuries. It is indigenous to this area, and the harsh living conditions make it a strong and hardy working horse. They are small horses, and they're all white. Some still roam free, most are semi-feral, and the rest are workhorses for the guardians. Guardians are basically French cowboys from this region of France. They are expert herdsmen for the Camargue cattle, these black cattle that you see with the horns all over the place out here. They are used for the traditional sport of course Camargue. I'm sure I said that wrong, guys. A kind of bloodless bullfight. Well, at least it's bloodless for the bulls. The bulls have rosettas between their horns, and the bullfighters remove as many as they can during the fight. They have small, running with the bull type things, followed by ceremonies. This area is rich with tradition for sure. So anyway, we're gonna hop on the road and we're also gonna wind this video down right here. Thank you guys so much for joining us. It really means the world to us. We love your comments. We love hearing from you guys. We look forward to seeing you on the next video. Cheers, guys. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell so you guys know when we put out new videos. And don't forget, you can always follow us over on Instagram to see what's going on in between videos. Cheers, guys.